Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing Best of Beauty 2023. I've already done my drugstore version of this and my favorite hair care products. So this is gonna be best of makeup favorites, of kind of like luxury and just, you know, mid-tier Sephora brands as well. I wanted to switch this year's way of doing the favorites up just a touch because for the most part, like you know, most of my staple favorites, like Chantecaille Future Skin, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, you know I love NARS Radiant Creamy, so on and so forth. But I wanted to focus this year's favorites on products that were favorites of this year. So products that I hadn't really tried previously and just the standout products that I used this year specifically and honestly doing the roundup this way was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be because I tried to only focus on like the newer products of the year or not necessarily if it was like a new launch but just something that was a new favorite this year unless I absolutely had to mention something that I've mentioned in previous years. So I want to start off with priming products. So let's get started off with primers. I had two this year that I really wanted to spotlight. So first one being the one from Refai. This is the face primer, the Glow and Sculpt. I really do like the applicator on this. It has a little roller ball and the primer itself is more of kind of like a serum type of formula. The glow that this gives your skin is more of like a hydrated plumped up glow. So it's not going to leave you with a luminous or pearly finish so it's really nice for dry skin types helps hide dry patches makes the skin feel nice and moisturized and I do genuinely feel like anything that I put on top of this it just gives me this gorgeous glass finish to the skin I mean this on its own like it just leaves the skin with this gorgeous glass like finish it's quickly absorbed into the skin so it doesn't feel like another layer of makeup on the base and I also have kind of a hot take on those types of primers that are really, you know, thick, dimethicone, silicone based primers. I find that my makeup never truly sets on them. So it just feels like those types of primers tend to make makeup, you know, slip and slide all over my face. So I love something like this that's just going to be absorbed by my skin, get my base looking nice and prepped and ready for makeup application without just feeling like another layer. So I loved the Refai one. And then the one that I feel like I just am so in love with. I've never used a primer like this. It's the Forever Glow Veil from Dior. It has the most insane brightening effect to my skin. I feel like my skin just looks ethereal and glowy, beautiful light pearl color. So I've tried other ones, you know, from the drugstore and stuff. And I just feel like a lot of times these pearl type primers, they make my skin look a little bit too metallic and on a medium or a warm skin tone that can often look icy and have an opposite effect on the skin where it honestly kind of dulls you out and emphasizes things on the complexion that you don't want emphasized so it's the color of this it's the formula it's the way it sets down it just gives my skin this really nice tightness not in an uncomfortable way but almost like this really gorgeous so i shouldn't say tightness um firmness it makes my complexion look a little bit more firm like my skin just looks really good like i just got a facial my makeup goes on top of it so beautiful it just glides over the skin i think it helps with longevity because it does kind of provide a little bit more of a set down base for makeup application and it's just it's the brightening effect that it has it's just so beautiful like i said i've just never used a primer like this and i feel like ever since i've gotten it i just i want to use this it just makes everything look so much more beautiful a makeup step that i personally rarely skip out on like it is so rare that i skip out on illuminator and for the most part i do feel like a lot of them are really similar i have a lot that i go through when i use on a regular basis but one that I felt like was really different and unique was the one from Westman Atelier. I liked this so much in the shade Pota Pesh that I also bought Pota de Soleil. So this one impressed me a lot that I wanted another shade. So this one goes on like a serum, but it has this slight oiliness to it. So it gives the skin a really nice sheen, much like a facial oil would, but it's thicker than your typical facial oil. So it feels really nice and comforting on a dry skin type. The luminosity on it is not over the top. So it's not going to emphasize texture or raised bits on the skin but just gives you this really lit from within glow and it's beautiful underneath your makeup mixed in with your makeup it just gives the skin this really gorgeous shine and I think a lot of the reason why I like this one so much is it feels different than my other illuminators because it doesn't really set down and it offers a little bit more in terms of that kind of like oily sheen versus just being like 
a good illuminator so potapash is a really gorgeous peachy gold nice and soft and then potasole is going to be the one that's more of a bronzy tone so it's going to give you a little bit more of a sun-kissed glow kind of give you a little bit more warmth and just kind of like a little bit of color to the complexion so they're really beautiful and i also do find that if you have a foundation that's perhaps a little bit too full coverage just a couple drops of this really almost kind of even changes the formula of the foundation makes it magically more dewy more skin like i just love the way it makes all the base products look a little bit more skin like little bit more moisturized of a base effect and these have made their way into my everyday makeup bag like i am like which color do i want to use today because i very rarely will not be using this so i love it and i love the versatility of this illuminator so choosing my favorite products from skin tank tinted for foundation <laughs> tinted moisturizers foundations all those things it was difficult this year because i have a handful of staple product staple foundations and skin tints that i really love and then there were new ones that i tried that i absolutely fell in love with i loved loved the fenty skin tint stick i was so impressed with that i loved the hourglass skin tint but if i had to tell you like the one that i reached for the most traveled with the most like genuinely love the way my skin looks when i use it it's going to be the chanel water fresh tint this is in my top five complexion products of all time the way this gives my skin customizable coverage while also looking so natural is just unbeatable in my opinion i like the water fresh tint better than complexion touch as well i just think it looks a little bit more natural all seasons even super hot humid florida weather i will still feel confident in this because it lasts all day like i know you would think this probably wouldn't have great longevity it's incredible it's just like it makes me feel good and it makes my skin look really happy really happy and healthy and when i wear this even when i had those you know super visible cystic acne and all that hyperpigmentation i would still wear this and although it didn't necessarily cover all of that up like i felt good when i was wearing this it deserves the spot for skin tints super impressed with two foundations this year so the house labs triclone skin tech foundation phenomenal i think one of the most unique things about the house labs foundation is the way it moves and flexes with your face so it has a very flexible finish on the skin it doesn't set down to where it starts cracking or crumbling in you know areas of my face where i'm emoting and it doesn't migrate it's just got this really unique formula to where i feel like it sets to your face like a latex glove it moves and flexes with your skin i find the finish of this to also be quite transformative so if you use it with dewier products it's going to allow that skincare and those dewy prep products to kind of transform the finish of this foundation as well as if you use things that are more mattifying same deal i think it plays really nice with all primers that i've used it plays nice with all the powders i've tried everything like it's just a really beautiful unique foundation and the coverage is incredible tiniest little bit longest way but you can also sheer it out and get kind of like skin tint performance from it so it's never dry it's never oily it's just right and then i loved the glossier stretch foundation it's not as radiant or dewy as stretch concealer but still has a lot of the characteristics that i like about stretch concealer in the foundation and honestly the coverage on this is so good i was kind of shocked by that because it is glossier i was expecting it to be a little bit less coverage but dare i say for me this is like medium to full i can still sheer it out and kind of get more of a skin tint vibe but really really impressed with this wears all day gets a little bit more dewy the longer that you wear it but it has a really nice natural moisturized finish on the skin and i wear the shade medium three it's such a good shade match and i know that with all of these shade matches they look drastically different but foundations typically look a little bit darker in the bottle however i could probably go a couple shades deeper for summertime with the house labs ones but all of these are such good shade matches it's like i'm always blown away at how hard it is to find an actual like decent shade match and it's one of the most frustrating things for me personally i have a very distinct undertone to my skin so even if things are just slightly off it really shows how like different my skin tone will be looking especially like neck compared to face if i don't have the right shade match and at this point i genuinely only have i think two or three 
three might be stretching it because I can think of two that are like perfect shade matches from the drugstore and then with other brands where they have more shades they focus more on undertones it's like I can get such a perfect match and I'm kind of over like drugstore base products because they are never matching me the way I want for the most part and on top of that drugstore foundations I have to buy typically two and mix shades that's like what I do for most of my products where it's like yeah I could have just bought one <laughs> that matches me perfectly but with like you know drugstore makeup it's like it's so hard for me to find really good shade matches and I just I feel like the shade match makes the biggest difference for me personally because it's already so difficult to find things that match my undertones correctly that I just get frustrated when I can have one foundation from Glossier or like one foundation from House Labs or like one from Giorgio Armani and it matches me but from the drugstore I have to buy like two or three and you know Frankenstein a shade when the price of buying you know two to three is like the same as just buying one concealers were also kind of in a similar boat i had a lot that i really loved throughout the year but these were the ones that i felt like were good all of the year and really impressed me so i cannot i i feel like i've mentioned this so many times but it's the kosas revealer concealer i wear so many different shades of this i will wear this on my face as one product so like different shades in different areas of the face and i can get a full face of coverage from it i like the concealer so much i i don't know how many times i repurchased this this year because i wear it almost every single day it's radiant the coverage is gorgeous it makes my dry skin look really nice and moisturized it has the most gorgeous finish on my skin every time i wear it i feel like my skin looks really good i love it i it just it legit looks so good on my skin it's the coverage, it's the, the way it blends, it's the formula of the concealer and the way it just sets down. You can skip powder with this. I can, probably because I have dry skin, but sometimes I will set it with powder too, but I just adore this concealer. It fits the bill for me all seasons of the year, all days of the year, almost any occasion as well. I just, I love the way my skin looks when I'm wearing that. And then I was also super impressed with the skincare and concealer from Givenchy perfect shade matches on these two so i use a lighter shade for brightening up underneath the eyes and then i have another shade dedicated to just hiding hyperpigmentation this has a really soft fluid formula it's not creamy it's very lightweight much more of like a serum type of consistency it dries down on its own there's not really a need for powder with it and it's gorgeous same thing with the Givenchy one a lot of times I will just wear this on its own so one for under the eyes and then one for the face I get a really nice flawless but natural effect from the Givenchy one and it's just like such a good formula it's so lightweight but has such amazing coverage to it and then my other favorite concealer specifically for brightening the tower 28 swipe concealer i was so impressed with this i again have a couple different shades of this so i can use a different shade for my face and a different shade for brightening up under the eyes but i loved how this kind of sets on its own so it has a little bit more of a satin finish on my skin i know this is you know advertised as a radiant finish concealer if i do use like some really moisturizing and illuminating products underneath it will have that radiant set but if i just wear this on its own I love the way it just kind of dries down to my skin has a really beautiful satin finish the formula is super lightweight so again not super creamy definitely the creamiest out of the bunch is gonna be the Kosas one this one feels like a eye cream essentially and then the Givenchy ooh, they're all fallen um, but then the Givenchy and the Tower 28 have more of those satin serum set downs on the skin so stunning loved all these um, and again like I just love a concealer that has multi-use the tower 28 one is phenomenal for brightening so I'm not just saying that for like under the eyes but even in the center of the face around the mouth and then even just like a tiny bit under the cheekbone if you really want to kind of get that lift on the cheekbone so good okay let's talk about powders so this is one of those instances where I actually really um, did love the Huda powder, the Easy Bake, and then I loved the Refi powder. Perhaps those will be in next year's Roundup. However, I didn't start using those powders regularly until around Thanksgiving, so it's really only been about a month. I'm loving the Huda one and I'm loving the Refi one, but the Givenchy Prism Libre is my favorite loose powder when it comes to these little 
potted powders. So I have two shades. I wear the shade two when it's winter time, spring time, like lighter skin tone months. And then during the summer, I wear the shade number four. So each powder is in its own isolated quadrant. And then when you open this and you mix the powder, it becomes one shade. Now the shade is already predetermined. So I think that the, you know, shades being isolated that's obviously just for aesthetic reasons but this powder is so beautiful so finely mills it gives the skin just the softest matte touch it's more on the satin side so it just looks really nice and natural very healthy it's not like an over powdered look and the skin just looks really touchable and lovely without being like dry or too matte there is a soft luminous powder um like a soft luminous pigment throughout this so it still reflects back light looks gorgeous feels really gorgeous on the skin too and i think I think that's another thing too that i love so much about this like it feels good when my skin's wearing this i don't feel like it's too tight or too dry um really great for brightening areas of the face as well and then when it came to pest pressed powder i loved the chanel Le Beige healthy glow sheer powder so this powder is pretty incredible because it like disappears onto your skin again the reason i really like this is because it disappears so it will mattify the skin slightly without feeling overly dried without looking chalky without feeling heavy it's just a gorgeous lightweight powder i love it this is the powder that i'm wearing on my face right now just to kind of set things it doesn't take away the natural radiance of the makeup that i'm wearing underneath it and i feel like it just kind of like gives this very soft subtle blurring effect to the skin keeps everything in place without making me look powdery or chalky and it's so finely milled like it is one of the most silky smooth borderline like buttery pressed powders i've ever tried i would say this is one of probably like the best dry skin friendly pressed powder i've ever tried so i really like it we'll see if anything tops it but as of now the chanel one remains supreme it's gorgeous disappears onto the skin moving into bronzing and contouring there is one contour that i use the most it was my absolute favorite it is the best contour i've ever tried so in terms of like cream contour so this is the face trace contour stick it's from westman atelier i wear the shade truffle it's the formula of this contour and it's also the shade for my skin tone like i said i don't like anything that's too cool i feel like if something's a little bit too gray it really shows up on my skin tone so i actually like more neutral slightly warm leaning contours that's what i feel like is the most natural on my skin tone truffle is the perfect color the formula of this contour stick is buttery, it's emollient, it blends into your skin very easily. It's a very beginner friendly contour. You can apply it directly to the skin, stripe it on if you're comfortable doing that, but you can also pick it up on a brush and get a little bit more of a soft diffuse effect. It goes on very creamy and very buttery, but then once it sets down, it has a little bit more of a soft powder finish to the skin. It doesn't need to be set with any type of setting powder if you don't want to. It just melts into your skin looks like an actual you know definition or chisel of the face without being like too over the top and it's it's really more than one thing i want to say it's the formula i want to say it's the shade but it really is the formula and the shade it's just it's a really really good cream contour it's i have not been able to put it down it has been basically the only contour i've used ever since i've purchased it and then when it came to cream contours you know i love the chanel cream bronzer and then i love the makeup by mario surreal skin soft sculpt skin enhancer um that's one of my favorites too but when it came to new products for the year i wanted to say the gucci bronzer proper i had previously been using the gucci setting powder for face as a bronzer and i really loved it now that one's a little bit more on the matte side and then the gucci bronzer actually has a gorgeous luminous finish the shade of this has that gorgeous warm golden undertone so it just wakes up the skin tone looks really gorgeous on the apple of the cheek and the formula again same thing not chalky at all really nice and finely milled just has this gorgeous glow um, and i love that soft gold shimmer throughout it it just kind of wakes up the skin tone and looks so lovely it's a beautiful toned bronzer i'm so in love with the color of it it's just such a lovely shade and i love 
the formula of the bronzer as well. And then I was also super impressed with the House Labs Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer. This has a really unique formula as well. So the Gucci one finely milled pressed powder, whereas with the House Labs one, I almost feel like there's this little bit of oiliness to the powder where it's a little bit more emollient and a little bit more buttery, but still performs like a powder. It's just got a little bit more grip to it, if that makes sense. So the brush will pick up a little bit more pigmentation from this, but it's still really nice and soft. It has just like a little bit of creaminess to it. It's a powder, don't get me wrong, but there is this little bit of creaminess to this powder that's really beautiful, and I think it is so stunning. It's such a nice shade. It does have a little bit of shimmer to it, not glitter. Not glitter. We don't do glitter around here. But it's got a little bit of shimmer to it to where it doesn't set down completely matte on the face. So it still gives you that really cute juicy apple of the cheek. This is the bronzer that I have on my cheeks right now. So you can see it. But really lovely. And I just... Unique bronzer formula. I haven't used something that's... I don't want to say it's creamy. But you know what I'm saying. It's like a little bit more of a slippy emollient powder. It's very unique and I was super impressed with it. Okay, let's talk blushes. So first and foremost, you know how much I love the Redimension Hydra Powder Blushes from RMS. I felt like this one completely took over as my favorite. This Maiden's Blush, which was my absolute favorite and completely taken over by Crystal Slipper. They're quite similar, but Crystal Slipper is just a little bit more of a fleshy nude versus Maiden's Blush, which is a little bit more of a cinnamon. You can see just by looking at these blushes that they reflect back so much light. They have such a gorgeous, juicy finish on the apple of the cheek. The formula is very lightweight. It's not a chalky blush at all. And the colors in this line are stunning. This is probably my most used blush formula. I just feel like it always looks really nice and radiant. And a lot of times when I'm wearing this, I don't even have to put highlighter on. But anyway, the, the favorite of the year was by far Crystal Slipper. I love the tone of it. I love the finish of this blush. I love the formula of this powder blush. It's blurring, but illuminating. It's gorgeous. Okay, so I also loved Flirtatious from Pat McGrath. Again, another like beige nude blush, but it goes with everything. And this one, same thing, although it looks matte and has that nice blurring characteristic to the powder blush, it still has just that little kiss of luminous pearl. So it still looks really nice and fresh. And I really love this one with like a smoky or a more intense eye. It just plays really nicely with more dramatic or like heavy eyeliner looks. And when it came to cream blushes, my favorite is going to go to Westman Atelier. I love these cream blushes. So I love the shade Petal. It's like a gorgeous, soft, rosy pink. And then my other favorite, which I actually use a lot more, is Chouchette. Chouchette is the one that I'm wearing on my face right now. It's just like a nice kind of nudie apricot. These Westman Atelier blushes, kind of similar in formula to the cream contour, but slightly more of a powdery dry application. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with the Westman Atelier ones. They go on not as creamy and not as dewy as other cream blushes. I'm kind of over like a super dewy blush moment. I feel like a lot of times with, I'm just kind of playing around with it as I apply it, um, but I feel like with sometimes with like super creamy or super dewy liquid blushes it lifts up the makeup underneath it and they're almost like a formula that's a little bit hard to control whereas with the westman atelier ones because they're formulated more on the dry powder side you get the benefits of a natural kind of set down like you would with a cream blush but the control and precision that you get from a powder but then also a little bit of that blurring characteristic as well so they're just lovely if i had to pick the one that i wore the most petal i wore a lot in the spring and summer and then fall and winter i've been wearing chouchette a lot so i couldn't choose just one because they're both really pretty but if if i was like really leaning into a cream blush it was going to be the westman atelier ones i just i like the way they perform in comparison to other cream blushes they're just a lot more flattering in my opinion and i like the formula because they don't stay sticky okay let's talk highlighters and we have one in each category so when it came to powder highlights i love the dior backstage glow face palette i've had this one for a couple years you cannot use these enough to like break that Dior stamp. They are so intensely foiled that the tiniest bit goes the longest way. This is a highlight palette that I think will last me 
forever and then there's also 10 grams of product in here so this one which is universal so that's the one that comes with the pink tone and then this year i purchased glitz and i've been addicted to the peach shade it is so flattering on my skin tone and i love the bronze one as well and the thing that i really like about the dior ones like i mentioned they're super foiled so they need just a tiny bit of product to give a filtered appearance on the skin, which is how I like my highlight to be. I don't really like my highlight to be like too intense. And I wear a lot less highlight than I have in previous years and kind of focus it just on soft areas of the face. And if you pick these up on a brush that's not quite as dense, you can do that like light buffing technique that I always do. And you'll still get just kind of that like glazed finish on the skin versus that like beamed up outer space highlight so they can be blinding that's just not how i utilize these products so i love how intense these are for the sheer reason that i need such little product to get the effect that i want and i think they're stunning like i just such pretty colors i love this pink one as a blush topper too so i loved these as my powder highlight and then my favorite cream highlight was the lit up highlight stick from westman atelier that's kind of how things go with me when i try one thing from a brand i'll start buying little bits and bobs here and there and slowly kind of like you know oh i like this next time i'll try that i like this next time i'm gonna try that and that's how it was for me with westman atelier and i've just been so impressed with everything that i try from the brand and i love the lit up highlight sticks this is like ultimate dewy balmy dream it's very easy to kind of go overboard with it and if you don't like a highlight that remains dewy on the skin you're going to want to pass on this but i love the balmy feeling of it and i love how this looks underneath foundation or on top of it and it can be sheared out to where it's honestly just like a glisten on the skin so if you build it up you're going to see more of that shimmer and if you shear it out it's truly just going to give you that like see it on the back of my hand where it's just catching the light super soft and I only placed it right there. That's what I really like about it and it feels not sticky. If it's sheared out, it does not feel sticky. It's really when you start building the product up when you'll start feeling a little bit more of the balminess. But same thing, like a little bit goes a really long way with the Westman Atelier one. And one that is kind of like a hybrid between cream highlight and powder highlight, the Say Glow Sculpt, and specifically the one in Quartz Glow. I loved so many shades of this this year. This was such a gorgeous product, but Quartz Glow, I really like for highlighting with. Now this has a really thick kind of clay-like texture, but it's also quite moussey at the same time. Quartz Glow is really great for precision highlighting, so it stays where you've placed it. It's not really a product that in my experience at least please keep that into consideration like a lot of that could be attributed to my skin type being a little bit more dry it doesn't move around on my skin so i get that like nice kind of cream effect from the highlight but i get a lot of major impact from it so i loved it on the inner corners of the eyes under the brow bone just a little bit right on the top of the cheekbone nose cupid's bow quartz glow was my most used shade but i also really liked bronze glow and mauve glow as well you can use them as highlights and bronzer toppers or blush toppers it's a really beautiful unique formula so if you haven't tried the say glow sculpts they're unique enough to where i think you could find a way to fit them into your routine and utilize them in a multitude of different ways two major brow gels this year so the first is the kosas Airbrow. i use this almost i mean i repurchase this almost monthly i wear it every single day and i was going through these like crazy i don't think the average person would go through them as often as i did except if i'm doing like multiple pieces of content a day i have to like wash my face like six times you know what i mean and so the brow gel that i felt like i always looked really good in and it would give me like a really nice um shape and hold to my brows i was constantly using kosas Airbrow. i used it on the weekends like it was just my brow gel of choice i absolutely love this and there was always a shade for whatever hair color i was so now that my hair is like highlighted i'm using the shade soft brown and i think it's perfect and i just actually this isn't the brow gel that i used but i did do a demo of it but um yeah it's phenomenal it gives your brows hold shape a little bit of tint i can literally do my eyebrows in less than 30 seconds when i use this not exaggerating like it just makes the 
process of doing my brows so much easier. And then the other one that I tried a little bit later into the year that I'm wearing right now that I really like is the Refai Brow Tint. So this one is more like a tinted hair gel. It has this little unique applicator. It kind of reminds me of that old Givenchy mascara. I really like the tint to this. It's, I use the shade Soft Brown. It's just easy to use because you just brush it through your brows and it's a little bit more of a natural soft effect and it doesn't give quite as much shape or definition as the Kosas one. So this is just a little bit more of an easy, not easy because they're both easy to apply, they're just brow gels, but a lighter, lighter fill. So the Kosas one gives like a lot more definition Whereas the Refai one just kind of adds a very soft tint to my brows, which I felt like is good for just every day if I don't want something quite as dramatic. Okay, let's move into eye products. By far my most used eyeshadow once they came out. I wear them multiple times a week. The Merit Solo shadows. So I recently just got Studio, Viper, and Midnight. But my three previous most used shades by far were Mid-Century, Brun and then Vachetta. So I adore these. I think they're great everyday eye colors. You can use them as an eyeshadow base, but you can also just wear them on their own. They go on as a cream and then they set down to a powder. I have seen a couple people say that they think these are dry. That's just not really been my experience. I think they go on so creamy and so easy to apply. I think they've got a good amount of slip to them. And sometimes I use my finger, sometimes I use a brush, but I think they are so lovely. And I just like how I don't even have to think about anything when I wear the Merit Shadows. I just put them on. They last, they're just good everyday eyeshadows, and I really, really was impressed with those. Okay, eyeshadow palette was really hard, but because I got all three, like my three favorite eyeshadow palettes that I got this year, I got around the same time and I used them all, but honestly, the one that I used the most exclusively for like two straight months is the Patrick Tom Major Dimension Volume 3. These shadows are insanely pigmented. Like beyond pigmented. The tiniest tap into these shadows will give you all the pigmentation that you need. And then under the acrylic flap, you have two little eyeliner shades that you can use as bases or eyeshadows. Once these set down, these two cream ones, they are there to stay. My favorite new eyeliners that I tried this year were the Buxom Powerline Lasting Eyeliners. I love the shade Copper Comeback and Bossy Brunette. One of the things I really like about these eyeliners is the shape of the liner itself so this is a little bit more similar to something you'd see on a brow pencil which actually makes the eyeliner lend itself really easy to creating lines on the eyes without being like overwhelming and i feel like it's just so nice for just running along the top lash line smudging it out or on the lower lash line they also have a really great gel formula to them so they last a long time you can use them in the tight line and the water line and they don't budge and if you are interested on both of these they do have a little smudge brush on one end that is really nice as well. So both of these are brown. Copper Comeback is definitely more of a shimmery, like lighter color, but I don't think you can go wrong with these. I really like the shape of them and they were like, once I tried these, they lived in my makeup bag. <laughs> For mascara, I loved the Too Faced Better Than Sex Foreplay Primer. Now this can be worn as an uh, mascara on its own. It has little fibers in it. The brush is kind of that half moon spoon shape. Really nice fiber mascara primer. I keep wanting to say mascara, but I wore it as a mascara most of the time. It gives really great length and really great wispiness, but also has some pretty clean definition and separation to the lashes. I'm like, I can't pick anything other than this. This is the Dior show, however. We switched it up a little bit. Not Dior Show in black, it's Dior Show in Catwalk Brown. This mascara just, it, I don't know. If I find anything that I like more than this, you will know. It's the formula that just works really well for my lashes. I love the brown shade. I think it just makes a brown eye pop. It looks a little bit more soft and sweet. You still get drama and definition without it being as black as black mascara is. And I wear the waterproof version. Just, I gotta be honest, I don't, I don't think, I don't know. I think it would be pretty monumental if this was ever beat by anything because this is the best mascara ever. My favorite mascara ever. 
ever. And we'll end on lip products. So I want to start off with my favorite um, lip liners. This year we had quite a few. So I loved the Tower 28 one-liners. You can use the Tower 28 one-liners on eyes, cheeks, and lips. The shade Draw Me is perfect for bringing back moles and freckles on the face, kind of making the base look a little bit lighter. And then Work of Art is just a great lip liner shade. So I love these. They're creamy, gorgeous formula, just nice and glides over the skin, no tugging. And then I loved the Victoria Beckham lip liner in the shade number two. Really great overlining shade. And then my favorite long wear this year was definitely Huda's Terracotta. It's a little bit more of a warm brown like pinky brown so i love that and they last like these really last a long time when it came to a proper stain the wonder blading lip mask from wonder skin i like the shade lovely it seems like i'm like everybody likes the shade whimsical i feel like that one's a little bit too pink i like how lovely is more of a true brown goes on as a blue opaque shimmer liquid <laughs> you let it set on your lips and then you wipe it off with a damp washcloth don't use a makeup remover or a makeup wipe just use water so that you don't break down that formula super long lasting and it's really great for kind of cheating the size of your lips as well it's a stain so it lasts the longest out of anything i had three most worn lip colors and i want to say these were the three most worn because i repurchased all three because I had used up the other ones. So the first is going to be the Hourglass Phantom Glossy Lip Balm in the shade Rise. One of these permanently lived in my purse and I used it up. It was like my favorite lip shade ever. These are so insanely glossy. I have never used a stick gloss balm that is as glossy as the Hourglass one. Even like the Tarte Maracuja does not compare to this. This makes Tarte Maracuja Juicy Balm look like not juicy. It looks matte compared to the Hourglass Phantom Glossy Lip Balms, and these are just so much better in my opinion. And the shade Rise is stunning. So I bought that, repurchased that at the Sephora sale because I used up my other one. And then the other one, which I know you've seen me talk about a lot, is the Givenchy Rose Perfecto Liquid Balm in 110 Milky Nude. One of my favorite glosses ever. I love this so much. It's just a really gorgeous, your lips but better kind of shade. And then we have Boy from Chanel. This was like an instant repurchase once I started hitting the bottom of my other one. This has the most gorgeous kind of oily sheen on the lips, just gives a little bit of glow. It's a really beautiful kind of like seashell beige, shimmer, cool tone, unbeatable, worn all the time by me. Now these two are running low, so I will be repurchasing. The first is from Westman Atelier. This is in the shade Nana. This is the squeaky clean, um squeaky clean liquid lip balm it's more of a lip gloss nana is a really gorgeous kind of cool toned nude beautiful i love a good like semi sheer cool toned gloss i am like scraping the edges of this westman atelier one i also just like the size of it it's really cute and then the other one is from say this is the same deal i'm scraping the edges of this to just get those last little bits of gloss out of here this is the say glossy bounce in the shade dip the road tinted peptide lip treatments obsessed i love the shade toast i think my most worn shade though is ribbon which is the light pink and then i love espresso i'm a huge fan of the road peptide lip treatments i think they are so good so nourishing and i was so excited that they came out with a tinted version i wore them all the time and i just really loved those i think they're so pretty and then i loved the dior gloss in 049 this literally looks like a glazed glitter donut on your lips it is part of the lip maximizer line so it's plumping it's beautiful i mean even just looking at it like how stunning is that and it looks like that on your lips it's gorgeous and then the last one was the Milk Odyssey Lip Oil in the shade Quest. Again, a really nice, um, kind of cool toned mauve. I found this to be super flattering. I really like the formula and they smell like Orange Julius. I'm sticking with that. They smell like an orange creamsicle. They have this really unique fragrance to them that I love. All right, and that is my roundup for the best makeup of 2023. I really tried to tone this down. I still feel like this is an excessive amount of products, but there were so many other things I wanted to mention, like, oh, and I really liked this one during the summertime, and this one was really great during this specific time, and I wanted to focus this one, like I said, on, you know, year-round favorites, but also newer products from this year versus, like, if I really did, like, best makeup of 2023, it would be those foundations, 
plus the Fenty skin tint, plus the Hourglass skin tint, plus Chantecaille Future Skin, plus Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, plus Chanel Le Beige Foundation, you know what I mean? There were quite a few things on rotation, but I really wanted to spotlight the ones that were newer, that I specifically loved from this year, and I could probably do something a little bit more specific, like makeup products I will always repurchase. Like maybe that would be a fun video where I show you like the makeup products that I have consistently repurchased throughout the years. That's actually a good idea. Let me know if you want me to do that. Products as well as their specific shades will be in the description box. And let me know any other videos that you want to see in the near future. I'd love to know your thoughts on some long form content that you would like to see this year or just throughout the last couple months of winter if there's anything that you really are wanting to see or new products that you want to see me review whatever it may be i will have my instagram and my tiktok in the description box as well and i will see you in my next video thank you so much for watching this one bye